my channel. My name is Ashley. If you're new here, I make content to help encourage Christian singles. And I just wanted to thank my new followers. I gain a little bit of followers each week. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for subscribing and for sharing um, my channel with other singles and I just welcome you, but I also want to encourage you to know that you're not alone in the single season and that God hears your prayers and that he's going before you in your prayers. So just welcome you and um, thank you for sticking around. Today I wanted to talk about um, my word for the year. I believe I started doing this I think when I was in college and I had just always heard people saying like they got a word from God for the year and I just thought that was really cool. I um, would just hear people's testimonies about it and I just started praying about it and um, I remember the first year that I actually started, you know, praying that God would give me a word. And when he gave me my first word, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> like, God. And um, at that point, I kind of just stepped out in faith and God really did carry me through that year with that word. And after that, I've just always prayed for a word of for the year. And it's been interesting because I... Um, I sometimes get the word like before the year happens and sometimes I'll get the word like four months after the start of the year and I wanted to make this video because I wanted you to start prayerfully considering like what your word for 2024 is gonna be if you've never asked God for a word for the year you know I would just pray about it see if that's something that you want to pursue see if that's something um, that you can kind of stand by and stick with because the Bible says to count the cost and I think truly when the Lord gives you a word for the year it is definitely a count the cost situation I have had a lot of words where I'm like mm, next <laughs> you know like I don't want that one and I am going to go over my um, word for 2022 and my word for 2023 and um, kind of let you know what's happening for 2024 just in my own life um, in 2022 I, uh, I was praying and just asking God for a word and um, it was really clear like when he spoke to me the word and I knew like in my heart I knew that it was going to be a hard year. It was going to be one where I would have to stick to the things that you know I needed to, to stick through. And I was like, God, I, I don't want this word, but I think it's kind of cool. And um, so that was an exciting word, but a hard word. And the word was unrelenting. And I just remember going through 2022 and hitting some hard things. And in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, God, you want me to be unrelenting no matter what to stick to you and no matter how hard things are right now to cling to you in this season and god was really faithful he stood beside me as i clung to that word and as i you know worked through things within my own life and i just um i remember it being really challenging i went through like my breakup in 2022 and I just remember thinking to God, like, um, you know, like feeling like that was the end. Like I, you know, had hoped for so much and it came crashing down. And um, that's, that's kind of what made me want to share my word, my word for the year, honestly. Um, I usually film my videos on Sunday, uh, but in church this morning, our pastor was just like saying a lot of things that reminded me of the words that I've gotten throughout the years and it really just uh, kind of confirmed for me to share this video and I was like God I 
I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to accept the word you have for me because it's an exciting one, but I'm not sure about it yet. So, but that's like later in the video, so stick around. Um, but anyways, so I just, I remember going through that breakup and just feeling like everything was over. And in the sermon today, our pastor was challenging us if you never get another thing from God, like, you should still know that God is enough. Like, let your faith be so set in who God is that no matter if you don't get what, you're be what you've been praying for, that you will still follow after God. And I just remember thinking, like, during that season of the breakup, just feeling like everything was crashing down in my life. And just so heartbroken that's my cats <laughs> they're hissing and fighting um i just remember thinking like god where do i go from here and i just remember god like basically saying like this is where you walk in the word of being unrelenting in your pursuit and it was hard because i um it was almost like a crisis of, not of my faith, but as of my decision to follow after God and my decision specifically to stay holy and righteous before the Lord. I was definitely tempted like during that season just to give up on my standards of dating because it's always left me single. It's always left me um, just feeling like no one will choose me. and. In that moment of the breakup, I just really felt like, you know, God, no one's ever going to choose me. And and God, like, kind of let me sit in that sorrow. And he kind of let me sit in that sadness. And, you know, after a while, I just realized, like, God wants my faith to be steadfast in knowing that even if I never have someone choose me, that God is enough. You know, I, I'm praying in faith for a future husband, but even if it never happens, God is still enough. And I know that that is that unrelenting spirit that God wanted within me. And so that's really the word that got me through that season. And um, it was really powerful. And God walked with me through the choice to stick with him and to stick to God's standard. So I loved that word. That's probably one of the best words I've ever gotten, honestly. And as I was praying the start of 2023, I just remember sitting and being like, God, there's never going to be a cooler word than unrelenting. And I just, I was kind of sad. I was like, can I carry this into next year? And, and God was like, no. <laughs> and, um, so as I was praying, God gave me this word and I was like, nope, nope, not for me, no. And uh, and so I just, I knew that it was my word, but I didn't want to accept it. And um, I, I remember praying and actually fasting about it and asking God to like confirm that this was a word. And sure enough like confirmation after confirmation just from all these different um like sermons songs everything and scripture um he confirmed it and i i didn't truly place it in my heart until about march of 2023 is when i was like okay god i know this is your word for me and i'm gonna walk in it and the word was worship and uh the reason why I didn't want worship is because I just felt like it was going to be such a year of pain and suffering and that I would have to worship God through it. And I was like, God, I don't want this word. I don't want the pain and I don't want the suffering that 2023 is going to bring into my life. And I just remember silence. Like <laughs> it was like me complaining to God about a word, but it was silent. And I believe there was a silence there because God wanted me to trust him in the silence. He wanted me to 
believe that he was going before me even though I couldn't see anything. And now here we are um, in the month of September and God has brought me through just probably one of the hardest years of my life. And in every season, in every sorrow, he has carried me through. I've had a lot of tears shed. I've had a lot of um, disappointing things happen. And God has carried me through because I've made the choice to worship him despite the pain. And that was another thing that was confirmed um, this morning in church. I, I'll put some of my notes in the description if you want to take some time to look over my notes. They're really um, just powerful. They go with today's talk. and But one of the things that the pastor was talking about is just choosing to worship God even though you don't get what you've been praying for. Choosing to follow after God even when things get hard and even when there's suffering involved, will you still worship God? And he used he used the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how when they were threatened to be thrown into the furnace, they said, you know, no, we're not going to serve your God. But one of the things that they said is even if, even if God doesn't deliver us, we are still going to not worship your God. And I think that is something when you're going through a hard season and you're going through just a time where worship doesn't make sense, you know, that's when in your heart you have to make the choice like, God, no matter what, I'm going to follow you. No matter the disappointments and no matter the heartbreak, I'm still going to worship you. And it can be cry, crying worship. It can be hurt-filled worship. And that was a lot of my worship this year. It was nothing, um, nothing where I felt like I had anything to give God. I didn't feel like I had anything but my brokenness to give to God. And I just remember um, so many nights where I was just crying and, you know, asking God to get me through this season. And he really truly has. He has walked with me and even though it's been a hard year and it's still not over yet. I I know why he gave me that word because he wants me to be mature in my faith and not allow, you know, just because I don't get what I want, not to allow that to affect my praise of the Lord and not to let that af affect my security and who he is and what he's doing in my life. And I was on a uh, prayer walk. I do a lot of prayer walks, um, which I don't know, like what you like to do is, this is like a side tangent, so hold on, pause. Um, I do a lot of prayer walks, um, and I feel like I get more of a connection with God rather than just like sitting and praying. <laughs> I, when I'm out in nature and just like taking time to pray and like listen to worship music, like those are some of my most powerful times with God. And I just, um, it was this just a couple days ago and I was praying and I was worshiping God and I was like, God, like this has been my word and like I've worshiped you through every season and I've worshiped you through so many heartbreaks and I was like, God, like, this word has sustained me all year. And I, for the first time, I thought about my year for, t my word for 2024. And I just remember thinking, like, what, what could be next? Like, what could be, what could be the next word after worship that you have for me? And what he spoke over me was so powerful and, um, I didn't want to accept the word because I didn't feel worthy of it. I was like, God, you, you've given me unrelenting. You've given me worship. You've given me all of these words throughout, you know, my life. And I don't think I'm worthy of the word that you're giving me for 2024. And, uh, 
and God really spoke to me like you're worthy for this and it's not of anything that you've done it's that you've been faithful and I was like okay God like I don't know like I want to stand in this but I don't know and I said God you're gonna have to give me like a confirmation you're gonna have to you know show me that this is the word you want me to stand on in 2024 and uh this morning, the pastor, like, he hit on some topics that were just like, okay, God, I feel, I feel like this is a word. I feel like this is something that you are giving to me. And uh, I've, I've debated whether to share it on here, and you guys are probably like, we'll share it. <laughs> um, but there's an intimacy there, and there's a... Um, there's still a hesitancy in my heart, like, okay, is this your word for me? And so I'm going to hold on to it for a little while. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to it because I want to really prayerfully consider it. But I just want to let you guys know that whenever I, like, feel that it is my time to share, I will share my word for 2024, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, but, but God has been so faithful. And I, I pretty much am pretty certain that this is my word. Um, but like I said, it's going to be one where I have to truly, truly trust God. And believe that he is going before me in a really powerful way. That he is faithful and that he is good and that he's a good gift giver and it's going to be pretty cool um it's going to correlate a lot with my word of worship and i i hope you guys stick around on my channel because i do promise to share it uh, i hate to leave you on a cliffhanger like that um but i i am going to ask that you guys pray for me um, my heart is to build a community here and i i want to ask that you pray that god reveals you know, and confirms what he has for me for 2024. And maybe that you could take these next couple months before the new year to ask God for a word. If you've never done that before um, and you're like, man, like I've never heard of this or, you know, I've, I've never thought about asking God for a word for the year. I want to, I want to challenge you that sometimes it's a hard word. Sometimes it's something where you don't want it and so I just I want to really like caution you with that if you if you ask God for a word that you are walking in faithfulness with that word and that you just don't reject it because um, you know we don't want to reject the things that God gives us as we're praying for those things and so I just want to like put a word of caution there <laughs> or if you are someone who has done that before and I just want to encourage you, like, as you're praying for your word for 2024, to get excited about what God is going to do. And um, even if it's a hard word, that God is going to walk faithfully with you through that year. And um, I just, as I'm asking for prayer, <laughs> I want I want to encourage you to also pray for yourself and um, pray for your friends, pray for the people that are close in your circle and that we can just be, um, you know, people who walk closely with the Lord and that we make an impact for the kingdom of God. And this uh, coming year, I, I believe, you know, we can, as singles, make a, a big impact, that we can make a difference. And that just because we're single doesn't mean that we cannot work in other people's lives, that we can't see miraculous things happen in 2024, and that our prayers are powerful and that they're effective. And as we choose Christ and as we choose him, even in the hard seasons, there's going to be miraculous things because we're walking in the power and the authority of Jesus. And the end of that story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is God walked with them through the fire. There was another in the fire. There was four. And I just, I want to encourage you with that. Like God is going to walk with you through the fire as you 
choose that no matter what I'm following after God, no matter what, no matter how disappointing things may look and no matter how many tears that may be shed, I'm going to walk with you, God, because I love you and I know that you are faithful and I know that you are good. And um, if you don't believe that about God, if you, if you don't trust his character, um, that that's usually a sign that you you need to know him more and that's okay it's okay that you maybe are doubting him or you don't maybe necessarily believe that he's truly good um that's a that's a normal doubt to have and i just i want to talk to you about that and and challenge you to know god more to look at his character and to read the word with that question. God, what is your character? What are the things you love? What are the things you hate? How have you walked with your people in the past? And how did you walk and how did you talk to your disciples? And, you know, God wants us to know him. He wants us to know his character. He wants us to um, trust him, not out of a blind faith, but out of a faith that's been proven and tested in the hard seasons. And so, just want to encourage you not to run from hard things and not to run from painful things um, once again with the fire you know that was a hard thing they they were choosing a death you know it wasn't a guarantee that God was gonna save them in the flames but they they decided ahead of time that even if God didn't save them that they were going to walk in faithfulness and that's that's truly like where we need to be as believers that no matter what the pain is and no matter what the suffering is that we are making a choice to follow God even in the fire and even if that means losing our lives and um, I believe it's in Romans it talks about like we we have not resisted sin to the point of bloodshed and I love that verse because so many times like we're going through suffering and we're going through pain and we think that it's the worst thing but it's it's truly not like even though there's so many painful things that we go through it's not to the point of bloodshed <laughs> you know it's not it's a death to self and so many times we want to avoid that pain and we want to avoid that hurt but in the christian life you know to live is christ and to die is gain and that's truly where our hearts need to be is not um not despising death we we're not afraid of death because we serve the god who has overcome the grave and when we can get like that mindset that god no matter the suffering no matter the pain i'm going to follow you um that's where that's where you know our strength comes from and that's where we can walk in a true contentment and a true joy that's found only through knowing God and so um, I just want to encourage you to know him and to take the time to know him and so um, I just thank you for watching this video I'm sorry not to reveal my 2024 word <laughs> Believe me, I want to share it, um, but it is going to come, and when I share it, you guys will be able to uh, just pray with me through the year, and uh, I just thank you guys for watching, I thank you for joining the channel, and I thank you for sharing my videos, and I just pray that your day is blessed. Bye.